Hey guys, Shea Bear 1000 here. Today we've got a couple different projects we're going to be doing and first we're going to start with this jack that doesn't want to raise all the way up. Stick with me and hang out in the garage if you would. We'll have some fun. Okay guys, this jack is not, one, it'll start to raise up something and then it'll just stop. So, and it's it's not leaking, so I'm, I'm not sure, I think it's low on fluid, but if it's not leaking, I don't know why it'd be low on fluid. But let's go ahead and check it. What we're going to do is we're going to slide this forward. No strength. Okay, and then put that up and off right down here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little rubber plug right there. Now to fill these jacks, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't really look like it was leaking per se. I never seen any signs of it leaking. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take this plug off of here. Out of here, I should say. It's just a rubber plug. Get that paint chip out of there. And we're going to remove it. With a straight screwdriver. Now, I'm going to look down inside there. see yeah it's low but I mean I, I don't see any signs of leaking so we're gonna put some fluid in here now this is just transmission fluid I know you should use hydraulic oil well transmission fluid for an old $30 jack is just fine it is a type of hydraulic fluid yes some things you can't but now what you're gonna to want to do that paint chip away from there so I'm going to squeeze this down in there and I'm going to watch until it just gets just gets to the bottom of this hole and I don't have anything here to jack up so well I got the four wheeler but I'm sure it would have lifted the four wheeler just fine the way it was before Uh, speaking of the four-wheeler, the free four-wheeler, uh, we're going to be we're going to be cleaning the carburetor on it. See if we can't get it running running enough to uh, take it for a ride. Well, really, that's that's all it needs. Um, well, it needs more than that. It's going to need an ignition switch because you know we don't have a key. I've got a hot wired. Uh, the plastic I'm not going to worry about on it. I won't sell it as it is. But, um, oh, I got to fix the, uh, the, uh, the coil wire, spark plug wire. I've got an end to put on it. I think it may be getting close. If I go this way, you guys can see better, maybe. I know you can't see the oil in there, but... It was definitely... It was definitely low. Um... Went over to her mom and dad's last, well, yesterday for a couple hours. Uh, her mom and dad's in the hospital. I think you guys know. Well, her her mom's like in a in a nursing facility until she gets well enough to be on her own again. Her dad is in the hospital. They're going to take his other leg uh, tomorrow. I think maybe tomorrow. 
Um, so, anyway, I went over to their house. Uh, you know, Monkey was cleaning up a little bit. You know, just uh, her mom needed some clothes. So she picked her up some clothes to bring to her. And I was kind of messing around with the Corvette a little bit. So it's getting closer. I'm down to, I got to put the, um, I got to put the, uh, the alternator and the supercharger on and then we can start that up we'll put some antifreeze in it we'll let it get up to operating temperature make sure there's no leaks and stuff like that and then we'll button the wires up make them all pretty and a couple vacuum vacuum lines I gotta find out where they go come on now Okay, so this is going to take a minute, and I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and fill this, and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, so I got it full. Uh, stuff gets on there, and it makes these stickers come off. I like to leave them on if I can, but... It says something on there. What's that say? It says, it says oil fill plug in English, but then in another language on how to fill it. But I already know, I've filled a bunch of these. Okay, so let's put our plug back in. Make sure I get all these paint chips off here. Because they paint these things after they, you know, like put the plugs in and stuff. So I got the paint chips off. But really, that's that's all you have to do to fill these things. And like I said, I didn't see any signs of it leaking. I'm not saying it didn't, but I used to keep this in the uh, in the back of the truck, and I bought one for the car, which I ended up taking one out of the car and putting it in the back of the truck because I went to use this one one day. And it wouldn't work. Well, it would start to raise the truck up, but then it wouldn't, uh, you know, it would only go so far and then it wouldn't raise it anymore. So, all right, let's, um, So it raised it up. Alright. Just tighten that with my fingers. We're gonna set this back down. I'm gonna pull the carburetor off of the the, the Polaris and uh I'm going to get it up here next. I may need to find some more light. There it goes. Alright. So, we'll check that later on something. Maybe the four-wheeler will lift that. But, anyway, let me get the carburetor up here. I'm going to go ahead and yank it off. Um, it's, it's pretty simple, so I'm not going to bore you guys with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. I'm going to get it up here. And um, we'll take it apart, see what it looks like. Um, it's like every time I started it, it does have electric store, by the way. Uh, but every time I started, it got worse and worse. So it's got something in, but it's a, it's a plastic tank. So I don't know, you know, I there wasn't any gas in it. Someone had drained the gas out, so... Uh, the only gas that would be in there is what I put in it. Um, I think it may have had a little bit in the bowl of the carburetor because it ran a while. So I think they 
they drained the gas out of the tank, but they didn't drain it out of the bowl of the carburetor. So, you know, let's get in there. That's why I got my carburetor cleaner out here. So let's get inside that carburetor and see what we can do with it. Okay, guys? Bear with me. Okay, guys, we got the carburetor off of here. Um, it doesn't look bad, but, you know, there's so many little, little uh, passageways and stuff inside. You know, people look at that and go, it's fine. Well, you, you don't know that really until you put it on and... As you can see, this is a plug here that's supposed to be on top of there, and it's got a split in it, so it could be sucking air there. Now, I don't know if that goes down in there, it'll be sucking air, and it'll be giving it too much air. I do see a, let me see if I can blow through that. Yeah, I can blow through it and suck through it, so that would cause it to to suck air and I don't have one of these but I can put a piece of fuel line on there and block the fuel line off okay so there's your main jet this is your idle jet so we can go ahead and take it out now I need one of those little magnetic uh, trays what I need there's that. Make sure there's nothing in there. Nope. Alright, now let's go ahead and take this out. We'll unscrew this all the way out. Uh, we're going to take this out. It was screwed all the way in, so that's telling me somebody was having issues with it before. There's a little rubber o ring and and a washer on there so don't lose them unless you have extras which I don't so there it is kinda inspect that make sure there's no you know no grooves in it make sure the ends not squished um, I do feel a slight groove right there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of fine sandpaper and I'm just going to you don't want to take a lot off this is brass so make sure you're using fine sandpaper and I'll take them grooves out of there here in a couple minutes alright so I did take it outside and dump the fuel out. Um, but let's go ahead and take these bottom screws out here. Because I didn't want a bunch of fuel up here on my bench, you know. And we'll see what we got on the inside of this. Um, this also is a screw that we'll take out here in a minute. What that does is drain your bowl. Like, if you get water in it or whatever, you can drain that out because water will go to the bottom. You can drain that out. It's a sediment bowl, kind of like, and you, you open that up and it'll drain your fuel. Any dirt that's in the bottom there will come out or should come out. Anyway, that's what them's for. So we're going to take these four screws out. And there'll be a couple jets on the inside of here that we need real with real tiny holes that we need to make sure the passages are 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 nice and clean. Um, um, you can use compressed air, but you have to be real careful because if you launch something like that across the room, oh, that's coming apart all right. Be careful because there's a gasket there that may stick and. See, there is a little bit of dirt down the bottom of that. Uh, so we're going to soak that and clean it. So, I mean, just even something like that size right there. Can you see that? That little black speck looks like a piece of pepper. Just something that small can clog one of the... Uh, yeah, see, there's a lot of dirt in there. 
can cl can clog one of the jets inside there. Let's go ahead and take this out. Oh, that was tight. Okay, so we got that. This needs to be uh Make sure this is not clogged, and I can't blow through it, so, um, right, so let's take these jets out, well, first, before I lose it, because I've done this before, I mean, the carburetor overall doesn't look bad, we may be able to salvage this carburetor, if not, I've already looked these up. They're 26 bucks online. Make sure your your flow valve is, is good. Make sure it's not, you know, the rubber's not not peeled or anything like that on that tip. And okay, now let's go ahead and take we're gonna take this one out. And as you can see, it's got it's kinda it's got some black shit on it there. And this has to be, you should be able to see through that, and I cannot, I cannot, let me turn the light on here. Now, see, I cannot see through that. That's clogged. Huh. Uh, I'm looking at it at the light right now and there is I just blew a little piece of dirt out of it now a lot of guys will tell you don't don't stick a piece of wire through there but it doesn't it doesn't hurt I've used uh, torch head cleaners on these things um, you just don't want to take off any of the brass you know but the same guys that tell you don't do that, they'll you'll see them with a little, um, which I've done with a little tiny uh, drill bit. Okay, now you can see you can see through it now. See, see that hole. Now you can see through it now. Couldn't do it before, and I can blow through it freely. That could have been the whole issue, but the carburetor is down this far. We're going to go ahead and. Take it the rest of the way out. Now this, you should be able to push on that, and that should push out of there. So let's give it a shot. Try not to, because if you dimple that up, they make a tool for this, and I don't have one. I got the screwdriver. There it is. See all these little tiny holes? They all have to be open and free of any debris. Same way with that. As you can see, the main one's open. Um, these holes, I'm looking through the light. Uh, these holes are open as well. I don't know if, if I can get it close enough for you guys to see my hand in the background there. See my finger moving in the background there? So these holes are open. Okay, so this is in good shape. We're still going to clean it all. We're still going to clean it though. Alright, now down inside of here is another one um, let's go ahead and see if we can get it to come out like I said this is brass guys it's very very soft it's a very soft metal you can I mean it doesn't take much to to strip these out or break them off if it don't come out don't mess with it we need to try to get this off too if we can because I'm going to soak this in carb cleaner. Yeah, see, it came off, and I'll clean it up. Uh, the carburetor, all in all, doesn't, doesn't look that bad. Now, the same way as the big one. See, it's got little tiny holes, which I can see my finger through there. Can we see through this one? No, see, we cannot see through this one.
and I can barely barely blow through it I can see a little bit of light through it um, so this could be an issue too it was you know it's kind of somewhat clogged up and I can't get my I can't get my wire past that point right there you know it should come clear out because that hole is bigger than this wire you know what I mean so if this wire does not go through it okay now I can see a little bit of light through there let me see if I can get you up here um, yeah see the light through there now you can see my finger but if you look in dead center of that there we go see you can see my finger through there so this is clear okay I can blow through it right there see focus there it is so this is clear let's see if the holes on the side are clear yeah we've already checked them you can see my fingers behind the holes okay it's still getting clean this one here is not is not clear um, this is just a just a bread tie is all this is a bread tie with the plastic stripped off of it there we go can we see all the way up through there yeah see now we can see all the way up through there and I can blow through it now okay so let's go ahead I think that's all I got to do. This is for the. I really don't want to take that out. Let's go ahead. I've got all the plastic and rubber out of it. And we're going to soak it in our carburetor cleaner. All these little parts. I need. I need an ultrasonic cleaner very badly. Um. They're not expensive, but I can't afford one right now. So I was hoping, you know, maybe some guys that set up at the flea market. Well, I call it flea market. It's actually just a yard sale. It's not really a true flea market down there. But we all set up. Hoping some somebody will run. Come in there and I'll run into them that happens to have an ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe I can trade something, you know, for something I got for it, you know, or... I'm gonna do. I don't want to do cross contamination, of course. That's got some dirt on the bottom of it from previous cleans. Sorry, I didn't realize you were zoomed in that much. Okay, so now I want to make sure that none of these parts will go through these holes. Okay, and they shouldn't, I know. Actually, I don't need to put the spring in there. But I am going to put these in here. They don't have to be because there's no holes in them. But that way, I'll get any residual stuff off of it. <clears throat> so let's make sure it doesn't go through the holes. Um, okay, there's that. this in here see how dirty that is okay we're gonna put this in here and this in here and we're gonna set it in here and I'm gonna let it soak for a couple hours and in the meantime um, we're gonna fix the uh, the coil wire or spark plug wire if you will uh, all right that's going to set. Now all this stuff I need to be real careful I don't lose especially that uh, this o-ring here. See that's kind of misshapen. Should look like a donut. See it's kind of... I don't know. I think... I don't know. Alright anyway I'm just going to put it back together the way it came out. It just didn't look right to me, but 
I mean, it could be, but I guarantee you that's been out of there. Somebody's been fiddling with it because, you know, it was screwed all the way in. And these, on, especially on these, um, always tell you you go one and a half to two turns. But these, these, uh, these Polaris engines, this is a two-stroke. You're going to want to screw it all the way in just till it touches. Don't go to tighten it. That's where you get that ridge at. You know, you get the ridge on there that we have to clean up or it can suck air past it. And it, No matter what you do, it's not going to run right unless you get that straightened out. Now, uh, so you're going to want to run this one out. I'm going to back it out. You can go... There, there's a lot a lot of people say you know between a turn and a half to a turn and three quarters some people just say a turn and a half what I what I always start with is I back it out one and a half turns and I'll show you that when we put this thing back together right now let me get the coil off here uh, my coil wire did I did take it off and I don't know where I put it so let me find it and we'll get the coil off and get it put up here Alright guys, we're back. What we have here is our coil. Now if you can see there, see there's a little bit of rust on there. That's where our wire hooks on, then it grounds here. As you can see there's a little bit of rust there. We want to clean all that up. And this is threaded. Can you see that? Looks like a screw. That's what this wire is going to screw into. Alright. And what that does so it screws down in to that wire and that's how it makes contact All right. also we're going to do away with the way they got it here we're going to clip that off and I've got two two of these ends um, I'm, I'm going to use this shorter one because that's kind of a long plug that's in there and so I want that 90 degree instead of it gives me more room Okay, so we're going to be using this one. We're going to inspect it. Looks pretty good. Where's, where's our light? Shine our light in here. Nice and clean. That's nice and clean. So that's that's going to be good. And of course, this just screws on the same way. All right. Now there should be a boot, a rubber boot, that covers this end. I think I've got one over there. I'll have to check and see. If not, I'll put some black tape on it. That just keeps the moisture and water out of it. So you don't have any issues. So, let me turn my light on here. I don't know how long I've got on this light, on charge-wise. But, we're just going to take this. And we're going to get this all cleaned up front and back same way with these metal pieces we're going to clean these up I don't have a Dremel with a wire wheel I need to get one of them too sometime make sure that's nice and straight see the back of it's a little dirty too so while our carburetor soaking we're going to clean this up okay and get it all nice and clean and then I'll show you how to put that wire on okay so give me one minute well you'll be back in a second don't worry about it okay guys as you can see hopefully we've got it cleaned up pretty good it's not perfect but I think it'll it'll suffice it'll be fine I'm also going to clean where this mounts to I'm going to clean it too with some sandpaper I won't bore you with that um, so let's go ahead and clip this off right here. Yeah, that's what you want to look for. See where it's real shiny? That copper. Same way with this end. Let's go ahead and we're going to clip this off. Make sure it's real, real shiny. All right. Now we're going to take our 90 degree deal here. And well, I need to see before I put the other end of this, all, all this does is screw on there. Just go until it starts getting real tight because you know you can strip it out and that's going to be good enough. Okay, now let me see if I got a if I got a boot to put on that. Alright guys, I do not have a boot to put on that. Um, 
I got one for this end, so that's good. So we're going to do the same thing with this. We're just going to screw this on. Sometimes these can be a little bit trickier. Well, duh. Put this on first. Sometimes these can be a little bit trickier. But all in all, it's the same thing. You just screw it on there. There it goes. Because it's a pretty snug fit there. And you can also wrap it with electrical tape. Uh, you can put dielectric grease on it if you want to keep, if you're going to be doing a lot of mudding and stuff like that. I would highly recommend that. Okay, so that's pretty good there. Now we're going to stick this up in there. Just like that. This, I'm just going to put some black tape around it. Uh, then this is, this is going to go on the end of here like this. See that split, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna put some black tape around there, some, or electrical tape, if you will. A lot of people go, "Why do you call it black tape?" Because it comes in all different kind of colors now. Well, I'm using black tape because it's black. All right, and I find that like red and blue electrical tape, it just doesn't seem to do as good. Now. If I had it, which I still haven't picked any up, yeah, the heat shrink, it's the stuff you put on wires and you slide it over, it's a tube, shrink tube, whatever you want to call it. If I had some of that, I would put that on here and shrink it up, but this will work just fine for now. I'm not going to be getting in a lot of mud with this thing. If it runs, it's going to be for sale, so... And I'll tell them exactly what is going on with this. That way, if they want to do that, if they're going to have it mud, they can do what they got to do with it. So, I know this doesn't look pretty, but it will keep the water out of it. Okay? So, there's that. Where's my knife? Get a nice... clean cut in there. Damn, blade needs to be changed. Okay, so that's good enough there for, for now, guys. Uh, I will put a little bit around this. Like I said, I don't want any issues. I mean, it's sitting here in the garage. It's not going to be outside, but that way somebody doesn't get it in water and, and then it shut down and bring it back to me and say, this thing's junk. You know what? It's as is, number one. Number two, keep it out of the damn mud. Okay. Also, guys, if you have one of these that's cracked, if you got to order one or it's going to be a little bit before you can get one, wrap some tape around it. It will be fine. I'll tell you what else I've used. is uh, Black RTV or Blue Goo. Blue Goo looks ugly, but so does Black RTV, but at least it matches. Put it around there, make sure it gets in there, and you'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about this end. It's kind of up underneath. Okay. Now, I'm going to go put this back on. I'm going to clean I'm going to clean this all off or up where it mounts, where it mounts onto the frame at. I'm going to clean that off. I'm going to put this back on. Uh, make sure the plug's tight. Let's get it outside and someone had put the rear tires on front, front tires on the rear. I don't know why. Uh, they do hold air for a little bit, but I noticed they're going flat again from the other night when I aired them up. So we're going to take it out. I'm going to take it outside, and we'll uh, change the tires around, and we'll use the jack and see if it's working. So hang tight, guys. All right. Got the battery on the charger. The battery does have a little bit of charge in it, but I don't think it's going to hold a charge. But this has got a boost on it, and it doesn't take much to crank one of these over, so... These tires are dry cracked all the way around, so I don't know if green slime is going to do anything for them. Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. Have to see what's going on with them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to put tires on it or not because I'm not planning on keeping it. So. 
got an offset to where you can make them wider. They've had them on both ways to where you can get a wider stance. But it puts more pressure on the axle. I think I'll just do it like that for now. I don't want to bend any axles, but whoops. Sorry guys. It'd be cool to put this engine on that little trike. I ain't doing all that. Besides, I think once this thing's all running good and everything, I think I think this would make somebody a nice little bike. A little fixer upper. The valve core on these would be on the inside. And since I'm going to be ending up putting air in this a lot, I'm going to go ahead and spin them around. Alright, I'm going to put the other, I'm going to go ahead and change the other side around. And then we'll get back to putting the carburetor back together. Okay, guys, we're back with the carburetor here. I've got everything cleaned out. Not too bad. Uh, like I said, an ultrasonic cleaner would be better. Now, here's something interesting I found on this. You see all them little, them little dimples and dings? Someone's had an issue with this carburetor before. That's from somebody tapping on it. Maybe the float was stuck. Usually, if your float sticks, you tap on it, and it'll be good. But, you shouldn't do that. And you shouldn't have to do that. But, okay, let's make sure we've got this stuff right. Because this is where your slide, the needle for your slide comes down into. So, this should go down in there I'm just going to use this just to make sure it's yeah see it's in there let's get some light on here see that's it right there alright this one gets screwed down into here with our where are you going? our little screwdriver here like that now we've got this this gets screwed on to here again these don't have to be super tight I mean you want to snug them so vibrations don't make them come loose but again they don't have to be super duper duper tight I clean this off got the little ridges off of it you have to be real careful with these again because if you're not, then bad things will happen. Well, it just it's not going to run right. Now they had this like that. Now I don't know if that's supposed to go in first. Because usually your washer, your rubber o-ring usually goes on but that spring there I think it I think it goes like that I think this is the way it's supposed to go but we're going to go ahead and put it the way it was 
with the washer on first because I can't remember on these things and this is it's beveled now but I mean I'm supposed to keep air keep it from sucking air in so let's go ahead and get this down in here okay so what I'm going to do I'll zoom in a little bit just for a minute and I'm going to just screw it in just till it touches because I don't want to you know there it bottomed out right there just till just till it touches and then I'm going to bring it out there's a half there's one and a half and then we can adjust it later if need be so all right now let's get our our float in here let's just clips on here like this and a little tab Just like that. Now we're going to put our pin in. Now you can blow through this as you're lifting up on this on your float. Or you can hold it upside down. If you hold it upside down and blow, you shouldn't be able to blow through your inlet. And I can't. But if I put it down, I can, and I can't. So our float is working fine. Now we have to get, this goes like, oops, forgetting something very important here. say someone's sprayed some carb cleaner on here it's like this uh, gasket might be swollen just a little bit I think it'll work yeah I got it in there because uh, like carburetor cleaner will swell up the rubber and stuff so you want to be careful when you're doing that kind of thing and screw this on here these started now this don't be alarmed about this if you see this laying over there this is the choke I've got it all cleaned up nice and pretty uh, that's what the choke cable hooks on to and then screw these on always crisscross them you don't have to it's just my way of doing things like this that way I know everything goes on straight it's kind of like a wheel you know how you do the crisscross pattern on a wheel um, it's just a habit I got into when I was young and because uh, sometimes these will go on crooked so I just kind of crisscross them that way I know it's on straight I guess this is not really a how-to, it's, it's, uh, I guess it is, I'll put it under the how-to, but, um, it is kind of just, uh, you know, for, uh, this is for the, uh, this is your idle, just kind of, you know, something to do. Now, if you look down inside there, see that? Now there's a bevel on your slide that goes up and down. There's a bevel on it. And once, you know, once you screw that in, it either pushes it up, which simulates giving it throttle, or if you back it out, it lets it drop down. Okay? So I've got a 
memory card light blinking. I'm on, shit, looks like it's going to rain. I'm on, uh, I'm using her camera. Because I like it better. Okay, so I'm going to go out there and I'm going to put this on. And as soon as I get it on, I'll kick you guys back on and let's see how it runs together. Now this, this, this bike is two-stroke, of course. I've mentioned that before several times, but it's got you don't have to mix gas and oil it's got its own oil tank and it injects it mixes itself okay but just in case there's an issue with that what I'm going to do and I'm you know I gotta make my little block off for that but what I'm going to do is uh, is I'm just going to go ahead and mix up some gas some two-stroke gas and I'm going to mix it mix it heavy and we'll mix it 50 to 1 because that, that thing hasn't been run in a while so let me clear some room off this card, and let me get this carburetor put on, because I can't get you up in there. Um, and then I'll, I'll kick you back on, and we'll see how it's going to run, if it runs at all, okay? Alright, so hang with me, guys. Alright, guys, let's give it a shot. Adjust it a little bit. No leaks. Let me see let me do some adjusting on the carburetor and I'll be back with you maybe we can ride it Alright guys, 
so it runs uh, I think I'm gonna call it right there I got some things to do um, before monkey gets home so I'm gonna get those done might grab a bite to eat first and have me a cigarette that's pretty cool still not right yet um, I think I need to get I need to get the carburetor adjusted a little bit more and then I think it'll be fine so that being said guys thanks for watching I really appreciate it and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas I'll be doing some filming I may do a live stream on Christmas I'm not sure maybe tomorrow night I'm not sure I got some things to do but we'll just have to see so if you guys don't see any more of my videos till after Christmas have a Merry Christmas be safe and y'all take care okay alright bye bye guys see you soon Shea Bear the Myth the Man the Legend I'm gone for now take care